Shalom, sisters. Shalom. Kohalo Yahweh Hashem Hamashiach Wamalak Yahweh Shai. All praises and honor and glory to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. So I have a special guest with me today. I have Amaya. Say Shalom. Shalom. So we're going to try to do these videos every Tuesday for y'all through the Spirit. You know, more so for Amaya, the builder of through the Spirit, to continue to learn how to exhort sisters. It's something that she's really good at doing. And I don't mind her, you know, exhorting me. And, you know, sometimes she might have to, you know, sometimes your kids might find you being a hypocrite. And that's okay, you know, as long as you take the correction. And I'm fine with that, you know, growing up, we never had that correction from, we could never give that correction to our, well, I couldn't at least give that correction to my mom, you know, like, hey, you know, should you be doing that or should you not be doing that, you know? So I appreciate when my children do that and it gives them an opportunity to learn and grow and be able to, you know, really show brotherly and sisterly love to Israel because that's really ultimately what correction is as well. So we're just going to do a quick little exhortation video for y'all. And this exhortation video, as you can see, is wearing your fringes, putting your fringes on your garment. Mama, <laughs> put in your garment, put your fringes on. Okay, so let's just hop into it, okay? And this is something that hopefully sisters, I know this might not be the video for every sister, but it's going to be a video for somebody out there. It's going to be a video for somebody, okay? Lord willing, if it gets uploaded. So all praises to the Most High. Let's jump right in there. We're going to get into the importance of wearing fringes and just do a quick little exhortation, Lord willing. All right, so this is Proverbs 7 and 2. Keep my commandments and live in my law as the apple of thine eye. Wearing your fringes is a commandment that the Lord has given to us, the children of Israel, for a reason. And let's get into that commandment. Okay. Commandments are important. Yes, they are important. Parting the money, parting the them being on your phone. Yes, ma'am. Okay, let's get the commandment so I can all right so this is numbers 15 and 38 speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue and it shall be unto you for a fringe that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them and that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes, which it's like you after which ye used to go whoring, that ye remember and do all my commandments and be holy unto the Lord your God, Yahweh Bashim Shai. I'm the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord your God. So it's very, you know, plain and simple that we have to wear these fringes. Because it's a spiritual reminder is that when we have them on, to not go a whoring, to not be lustful, to not do things that we wouldn't typically do, um, to not go after our own mind. And that's why you see when a lot of people fall out the truth, they typically stop wearing their fringes. They stop wearing their fringes first and then they end up falling out the truth. Because it's all it's spiritual. Wearing the fringes are spiritual. It it may seem like, oh, it's just physical ribbon of blue and fringes, but the Lord commanded us to wear that for a reason. Not only, you know, for us to have that reminder, but that's what makes us peculiar. And the Lord called us to be a peculiar people. All right, so let's get that. Yes. All right, this is Deuteronomy 7 and 6. For thou art in holy people unto the Lord thy God, the Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So the Lord chose us to be a holy and to be a peculiar people. And you, you can't call yourself an Israelite woman, a holy sister, if you're not doing one of the main things that the Lord told you to do, which is to have fringes on the border of your garment, of your shirt, your dress, your jacket, your skirt, your, your cardigan. Yeah, you can even put them on your hair wrap. But you do need to have them on the border of your garments. Okay? We've met a lot of Israelites just from, you know, having your fringes on. 
you can miss out on a great opportunity of meeting a sister, you know, because you don't have your fringes on. She might see you from afar and see you got a skirt on, but then where's your fringes at? And you can say, oh, well, it's because I don't know how to sew. Well, it's okay, we're gonna get there, all right? All right, and this is Psalms 4, 3, and 5. But know that the Lord hath set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still salah. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. So the Lord is setting apart which is godly for himself. And a part of being godly is wearing your fringes. You know, you don't want to be caught out in the last days and you have strange apparel on. Wearing, Not wearing your fringes is strange apparel. And let's get that. All right, this is Zephaniah 1 and 8. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such are clothed in strange apparel. So the Lord is going to punish all of us that are clothed in strange apparel. Strange apparel, which is ultimately some sisters can say, hey, I can wear pants. I, I don't see none of our foremothers wearing pants. But you can't get out of not wearing fringes. You cannot get out of saying that you don't have to wear your fringes. If you have a sewing machine and you don't have fringes on your skirt, then it's really no excuse at all. It's no excuse. You can even make fringes. You can even cut the fringes. I'm wearing fringes now. I put a ribbon of blue on and I cut my fringes on my skirt. You know, we're very um, creative people. We always know how to make something shake, especially when it comes down to keeping the commandments. And I do feel like Numbers 15 gets looked over, you know, like, oh, well, I don't, I'm just running to the store or I'm doing this and, you know, I don't have to put the fringes on and, you know, I, I'm not, do no, it, it's, it's no, it's no excuse. It can't be looked over. We can't look over. If that's the case, if sisters want to look over not wearing fringes, then why are you even keeping Passover? Why are you keeping any of the high holy days? You know, you can't really pick and choose which laws and commandments you feel like keeping when you want to keep it. The law is forever. All right, this is Psalms 119 and 44. So shall I keep thy law continually forever and ever. So this is something that, you know, we, we have to do through the spirit. Psalms 19, seven through nine. The law of the Lord is perfect converting the soul the testimony of the lord is sure making wise is simple the statutes of the lord are right rejoicing the heart the commandment of the lord is pure enlightening the eyes the fear of the lord is clean enduring forever and the judgments of the lord are true and righteous altogether just like amaya said you know more than being on your phone more than money more to be desired are they than gold, yeah, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. So the Lord sees fit for us wearing these fringes on our garment. He sees that this is perfect in his sight. And you know, when we get up and you might say the Lord's prayer, and you might say, well, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. A part of the Lord's will is wearing your fringes. You can't say thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven if you blatantly not putting fringes on your clothes because you're afraid of what your boss is going to say what? you're afraid of what you know your your parents might say say no you have to stand boldly for the name of the lord and wearing your fringes is standing boldly for the name of the lord understand that and representing that you are israelite and and it's a you're doing an anything what the Lord commands you to do, but you are not wearing fringes. You are you are supposed to be in the truth. You are in the truth, but you don't wear fringes. Well, being in the truth, which ultimately means is being in a law. So being in a law, that's why I always say it's it's way more than when people say they're in the truth. It's way more to just saying you're in the truth. 
saying, yeah, I'm in the truth, or is she in the truth, or is he in the truth? Well, I've been in the truth. Being in the truth is being in the law. You know, is examining the law. And not everybody, we're all not going to be perfect. Nobody's going to be wearing skirts automatically. Nobody's going to have fringes on their clothes automatically. But this is an exhortation for if this is something that you are struggling with, then, hey, look, I have to do better. I have to do better because I know that this is what the Lord has commanded me to do. You know, ultimately, we can say a lot of us want to say that, oh, you know, I'll be ready to die for the Lord and. You know, I'll be a martyr for Yahweh Shai, and I'm in a truth, and Yahweh Bashimi, I'll shy till I die, Barakatha. You know, those words will be said, but it's also about your actions as well. All right, this is Matthew 7 and 16 through 20. Ye shall know men by the, you shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bringeth forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. So if somebody says, well, yeah, I'm in the truth, and I'm doing this, that, and the third, and sometimes you can tell by their fruits if a person is really in the truth which is ultimately the law. The law is the truth. All right, and this is Psalms 119 and 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. So being in the truth, when you say you're in the truth, meaning that you're trying your best to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. No one is perfect. Everybody slips and falls. Nobody is, I'm not saying we're perfect. Amaya not saying she's perfect, and I, for sure, I'm not saying I'm perfect. The Lord but, is perfect. Kind of, the Lord is perfect. But we're striving for perfection. And a part about being in the truth is striving for perfection and really being diligent. All right, this is Matthew 5 and 48. Be ye perfect, be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. So we have to strive to really truly be perfect through the Spirit. Because we know that the Lord is perfect and He is our example at the end of the day. And this is Ecclesiasticus 4 and 28. Strive for the truth unto death and the Lord shall fight for thee. So we're striving for the law. I don't want to rot us out until the day we die so that the Lord can fight for us so that we can be delivered out of this captivity. And again, a part of striving for that truth is making sure that we're keeping the laws again because the law is the truth. And a part of the laws that we have to keep is wearing those fringes on the border of our garments with a ribbon of blue. Okay, now let's go ahead and go into Proverbs 31. All right, so this is Proverbs 31, and we're going to start at, we're going to work our way on down. We're going to start at 10. Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies? The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. Let's read that one more time. And worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant's ships. She bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a, sealed, a field and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands, she planted the vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength and strengthened her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good and her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle and her hands hold the distaff. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor. Yes, she reaches forth her hand to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. So let's jump down to 24. Well, her husband is known into the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen and selleth it and deliver girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing and she shall rejoice in a time to come. She opened her mouth with wisdom and in her tongue is a law of kindness. 
She looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. So I want to go up to, you see that? Thank you. So I want to go up to the point of she worketh with her hands. You have to be able to work with your hands. You should be able to learn how to sew, even if it is so infringes by hand, which I know a lot of sisters actually like to enjoy to do. Whether it's getting a sewing machine and sewing fringes by hand, okay? Whether it's getting some um, some fabric glue and some glue to, if you don't have a sewing machine, to glue them onto your garment, to make a Velcro belt and then Velcro them onto your garment, to uh, bobby pin them onto your garment, uh, safety pin them on doing what you got to do by all means necessary to make sure that you are keeping that commandment that the lord said and the lord put also in that number 15 he said i am the lord thy god about three times letting you know that i'm the one who's telling you this you need to put these fringes on your garment and it's really not a game and it's not anything that should be taken lightly so you have to learn how to work with your hands go ahead like how, how I made that garment for my baby brother. I made it out of tape and just with some scissors. Yes, you did do that. Amaya did make a garment and fringes with some tape and some scissors. You know, she's five, so she has to be crafty and cre creative of how to make things happen. So, you know, how much more sisters that are of age that can take the time to learn how to sew fringes onto their garment. You were six. Oh. Okay, sorry. Okay, let's go down to verse 22. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. And verse 21, she is not afraid of the snow of her household, for her household are clothed with scarlet. So the Proverbs 31 woman does sound like a sister that, that does know how to sew. You know, you making your own coverings. You know, you know how to make things for your household. You know, that goes into being a Proverbs 31 woman. And this is somebody that we should all strive to be like. All right, let's go down to. She maketh fine linen and selleth it and delivereth girdles to the merchant. So not only is this sister making fine linen. Now, don't feel pressured because not everybody can, you know, it's not everybody's lot to sell garments. And, you know, that's a lot of it's a heavy lot and a lot of work but if the lord put it in your spirit to do it then go ahead and do it through the spirit knock it out but looking well oh so like you, but making that fine linen and selling it you know that's also a craft for it that's also a skill that a sister can use you know some sisters make their fringes and sell them some sisters sell fringes with shirts on it you know or skirts with shirts on it you know, that's the part of being a Proverbs 31 woman. Okay. When you read this verse, it's a lot of make. You got to make this. You got to use your hands. You got to do that. This and the third. Now let's go down to 27. She looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. Now look at well to the ways of your household is making sure that your everybody in your household has fringes on their garment. I had a stack of t-shirts that didn't have fringes on it. And Elijah, my um, second youngest, he said, hey, mom, why my fringes, why my shirt don't got no fringes on it? I said, boy. But then I was like, you're right, I need to put some fringes on that shirt. So I started to stack up their shirts that don't have fringes on it and put them in a pile so I know that, okay, these are the shirts I got to put fringes on. But yeah, I say that to say that you that's looking well to the ways of your household. Or people in your household know, where my fringes at? What's going on? You don't got no fringes on? You know, what's going on? So, and that's also being an example to, you know, your children, to other sisters, um, you know, to Israel overall that don't even know that they're Israel. They'll see your fringes. I just saw my, I met my neighbor not too long ago and she was like, oh, y'all Israelites, you know, because of the fringes. And, you know, we started talking, having, you know, conversation, etc it's about being israel wearing those fringes really do go a long way 
All right. And let's go back into verse 27. And eateth not the bread of idleness. Meaning that you're not lazy. You you got to be lazy to, to just sit. Now, I, I am going to keep it real. Because I can be lazy too sometimes. So I'm not going to be a hypocrite. But I do make sure that my kids have fringes on their clothes. Or that we do have fringes on our outfits. But that is ultimately lazy. You know, just that is a, a rebuke. It's a rebuke that's not calmly. And this is actually very calmly rebuked. That, but not putting fringes on your, your outfits for your kids and for yourself and your household, um, that's very that's very lazy. It is. You know, we all have our moments where we know we got to sew stuff, but if you just blatantly just don't want to do it because you in a rush, because you, you know, whatever the case may be, it's no excuse. Because we supposed to be looking well to the ways of our household and not eating a bread of idleness. So that our children arise up and call us call us blessed, and our husband also, and he praiseth her. Let's read verse twenty nine. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. But favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that fears Yahweh by Shimei Shai, she shall be praised. So, just like I said before, by their fruits you shall know them. Paraphrasing that precept. So give her the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her in the gates. By your works, people are going to know you. So how are people really going to really know you that you're an Israelite if you're not even wearing your fringes? You know, that favor can be deceitful. That beauty is vain. But a woman that fears the Lord, which is a woman that fears the Lord, is a woman that's going to make sure that she has fringes on her garment and that her children has fringes and that her household has fringes on her garment, the border of their garments with a ribbon of blue. Switch it up. You can get the little fringes, you can get the big fringes, light blue, dark blue, velvet, satin, hook it up. But you better make it happen. Understand that. All right, and let's go up to verse 10. Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies. So you have to ask yourself, am I that virtuous woman that Proverbs 31 is speaking of? Okay. All right. So let's go fringe shopping. Okay. So this is where we get our fringes from Hobby Lobby. All right. I like these like natural tassel fringes, like for the summertime. Look, like they're $2.39. It got a deal going on, 40% off sewing, ribbon, and trim. But I personally don't buy um, the fringes on my Hobby Lobby. I go in person. But these are like some of the fringes that they have. This is enough for like one garment, for like a cardigan or a skirt. It's giving, you know, vacation, beach, summertime type of fringe. It's cute. Yeah, that's really, really, really cute. Mm-hmm. Okay, and these are these fringes are cool. I like fringes like this, um, but I don't like them this long, depending on what you know I wear with. So let's say, look, let's go shopping. Let's go online shopping where we can compare fringes and we can put them on a garment, like as a little motivation for y'all. Okay. We should probably just cut out those a bit because we don't want our fringes too long. We Pick some fringes. Okay, so let's get these fringes. These are these are cute. I used these before on a jacket for Amaya. Okay, got a little sparkle going on there. It's $149. Alright, so let's click this. Are right, we gonna screenshot it? Screen. Alright. Okay, so we okay, so we're gonna get those fringes. And yeah, then we're gonna get mm-hmm. Let's see what else they got. That's cute. That's cute. This that's cute. This one, yeah, it's real colorful. Let's see if they got some. And we're gonna pick out a skirt to go with them, okay? It's so not yeah, for so you and me. No, not for us, just for the sisters. Okay. This okay, so now we're in Amazon. Look, they even have this right here. This is $18.99 for the fringes and the ribbon of uh, blue. I think we have those before, but mm -hmm. we need some more, though. All right. These are, like, the basic fringes right here. The 
The gold, the long bullion fringe. Those look pretty. Yes, I think we got those for Passover. Yeah, those look like feathers. Mm -hmm. These are just, you know, 30 yards, 25 millimeter wide tassel fringes. And I like how they all came in different colors. So you can just, you know, put them on different garments. If you got like an orange garment or something, you know, you can hook it up. All right, so let's go. We're trying to find a fringe. Yes, these are so cute. And this is the glue that you need if you do want to do the rhinestone fringe. Look, you even have more. It's no excuse, sisters. Look, you see that right there? Those fringes right there with that ribbon of blue, 1989. Get it by tomorrow, July 10th. Glue them on your garment. So we're going to keep looking. Okay, let's keep looking, guys. Okay, so we're going to find fringes for a captain. And then we're going to try to find fringes for... I love leather fringes. I think they're so cute. Depending on what you want to put them on. That's for a table. A table? Okay, so look. And they have different ones. They have black. I, I like the gold ones. Okay, y'all see these right here? We're going to find something to put this on. The gold ones, they look like something for kids. Okay. Okay. All right, so now we're going to look for a ribbon of blue. Look, they have different types of ribbon of blue. Okay. You don't have to get the thick ribbon of blue. You can get light baby blue. You can get velvet. You can get satin. You can get all different types. You can even get you a sheer baby blue. I mean, a sheer ribbon of blue. My favorite is velvet. My favorite, I, I love the velvet ribbon my of blue. My favorite is sheer. It looks pretty. Okay, so now let's go ahead and let's go to Shein, y'all. All right, so now we're looking for skirts. Okay, so now we're going to look for skirts for that, that tan fringe that we saw. Okay, let's see what they working with. Okay, this is very look. We're doing very something very simple. You see this right here? Yes, it looks like this you is cute. Wait. Okay, you, it looks so like we're gonna you, screenshot this. You can wear gonna, that vacation kind of. Yeah, it's like a it's giving like a vacation skirt. Are you gonna save this skirt? Okay, and let's look and see what else. Let's see what else we can look for. This is a, a cute skirt too. Ooh. Now this look a little sheer. It look like you might need to put a little something up under there. Let me see. Okay, we're gonna take that one too. Now let's look for like a denim skirt. All right, so let's work with this skirt. We went with two options. We're going to work with this skirt right here. Then we're going to work with the denim skirt. Something very simple, very cute. And then we're going to get another skirt. Let's see if they have like a pink skirt. Okay, let's do let's do the skirt. This is cute. That skirt, it's cute. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna do this skirt as well. Okay. Are we gonna substitute this skirt for? All right, so we're going to do these two options right here. All right, now look. Let's put the, look, let's, look, we got two skirts now. These are a very appropriate length. They look great. Look, this is a nice vacation skirt. I messed up last year when I went on vacation. I cut my skirt too short. It, it just looked so ridiculous. So make sure that you have a nice length on your skirt. Okay, so let's go ahead and at the fringes look we're gonna put some we're gonna put these gold fringes on here y'all like it's nothing all right this might 
this might actually look crazy to y'all but i don't care look we're gonna put these fringes on the bottom of this skirt like this like so it match perfect. and look so even though it's long sometimes even if it's long you can put it on like it don't got to be at the very like it could be right there okay look she got her fringes on boom Now she got her fringes on. She got her fringes on. Boom. Boom. Those look good. Hold on now. You can't tell her nothing. I mean, if she going off, you can. But as of right now, you know, it look like she she's doing her big one. Fringes oh. on. That's so cute. That is so cute right there. Look. And then all we got to do is add that ribbon of blue. Hold on. That look like a cut right there. It's like a little slit right there. Mm -hmm. All right. So That's now we're going to. So now we're going to go ahead and get. Slip. Let's see if we can find a little blue line. Here we go. Oh, that's pro. Well, I don't have Canva Pro, y'all. Hold on. Let's get a blue line. Here we go. She said she wanted baby blue fringes on it. I mean, baby blue, ribbon of blue on there. Cute. Aww. Boom. We in there. We in there. Now let's go ahead and do like a dark blue. Like typically for something like this one on the right, I would do like a velvet dark blue. So let's do that for this one. All right. There you have it. I mean, it, it's a camera right there, but hey, she, she got that on. She got that on right there. All right, and let's see the total cost of all of this. All right, so, and you have options. You can find stuff like this at the thrift store. I see it's raining, all praises to the most high. Yeah, you can find stuff like this at the thrift store, okay? You can get a little nice, cute denim skirt. Yes, you can get a nice, cute denim skirt. You know, anything like this. Just, I just wanted to show you an example. So lucky, y'all, it started raining is just a general idea of how you can just find matching fringes and an outfit and make it fun it's not grievous to keep the commandments it's exciting it's fun you know it's fun to find different fringes and to try to make your own fringes and when you put those fringes on your garment it's like you got a brand new outfit on it could even be on an old outfit and you put some fringes on there feel like you got a new garment on all right so we're just going to close it out with this one precept and this is Ecclesiastes 9 and 10. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whether thou goest. So you found yourself keeping these law, statutes, and commandments. Okay, so that means you have to do this with all your might. Meaning that you better go all the way out when it's time to put them fringes on that garment. You go all the way out and you do the best that you can. Okay. Well, then this was a helpful video for sisters. And, you know, take some time to meditate on, you know, making sure that we're doing what we're supposed to do through the spirit. Lord willing, we'll be back next Tuesday with another exhortation video with the law. Shalom.